So Cecil, recent horror sequels have course corrected accordingly, Annabelle, Ouija, and made their sequels a little bit better. Was that the case with Brahms the Boy 2? I'm waiting. As expected. <laughs> Have you checked the What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got Hamid and Fuego here. And we are here to review Brahms, The Boy 2. Yep. That's right. This is a <laughs> sequel to 2016's The Boy, what? which was essentially Housebound mixed with Annabelle. Yeah. Uh, Interesting you know, comparison. If yeah. you guys haven't seen Housebound, it's about a dude living in the walls, and Annabelle is about a doll that doesn't actually move, and Housebound just mashes those two things together. <laughs> Brahms, the boy too. I mean, there wasn't the best response to the boy one. There was obviously enough of a of money or enough money made that they wanted to make a sequel. However, low budget. Horror, it was man. it was critically <laughs> not. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Both critically and audience, uh, they didn't receive it very well. Yeah, yeah. It was panned by both sides, unfortunately. So why are we seeing a sequel? Well, Katie Holmes, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, she it was it was Maggie from The Walking Dead in the first one, and Lauren, she wasn't enough to save that. Lauren Cohen. Lauren Cohen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Katie Holmes wasn't enough to save this one either. I mean, this, they did try and do, like Fuego alluded to in the cold open there, uh, they did try, it seemed like from the trailer when we did our reaction to it, that they were going to try and course correct the way Annabelle did from Annabelle to Annabelle creation, and the way Ouija did from Ouija to Ouija Origin of Evil. Give the both of those sequels, want. yeah, both <laughs> of those sequels were good, and in our opinion, Annabelle Comes Home was still enjoyable too. Um, <clears throat> but... This this transition wasn't the same quality transition, unfortunately. Yeah. It still uh, looked nice. It, I mean, I mean, it looked okay. I mean, it was competent. It wasn't anything that was blowing me away. It was just a lot of straight, you know, everyone right. dead center for the most part. You know, uh -huh. almost almost the whole way through. But it just it wasn't. Overall thoughts were are that even though they tried to do something different with it, rather than going with the same kind of ultimate resolution and whatever bad guy that they did in the first one it didn't save the movie it it just was stupid for a whole bunch of do other reasons now yeah. okay <laughs> your overall Touché. thoughts overall thoughts man I, I mean i i like the mythology of the boy verse more so than the actual execution of it okay. i mean because they do really like flesh out stuff significantly more so in this with like backstory and history of this doll and everything associated with it i found that stuff very fascinating but the execution in this with low stakes and no like nothing really happening you know throughout the predominance of it it was uh, significantly disappointing in that regard and so while you know i didn't think the acting was necessarily bad i didn't feel like it was shot very terribly um yeah it's it's just a very dull boring forgettable film mm -hmm. yeah in that regard so so now we're gonna dive deeper into the review you guys go over the story the acting the effects all of that good stuff in turn but i will say that we are going to do a spoiler section at the end of this review we'll give you good warning and all that good stuff but uh, you know, there's a, a couple things that we just have to talk about, and it's just not worth doing a whole separate review about it. So, Truly. <clears throat> story-wise, go ahead, Fuego, why don't you tell them what the story was? Yeah, so story-wise, we have a uh, traumatized family. So basically, Katie Holmes has a home invasion situation that goes down, and her son is not speaking after said situation transpires. And, uh, you know, father, he's like kind of around, but... Not so much there in uh, the UK, which is, uh, I was really trying to remember if the UK was the setting of the it previous was. film. It mm -hmm. was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally Yeah. They do totally have the house that. from the first one in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they, uh, they're, they're basically living in the separate, like almost like side guest house. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, there is a doll that is unearthed from the groundskeeper who, well, I guess I can't say that because I was going to mention uh, his association with the situation and can't mention that. But uh yeah, I mean, Kid is still not talking, and he has that uh, immediate affinity for this doll, and, uh, you know, they're, like, hoping it can get him out of his, uh, 
you know, like quietness and, and sadness, whatever. Uh, yeah, Katie Holmes is rather forgettable in this as much as I adore her and love her and I still think she's a fox even in her, like, late 30s, Are early 40s. Are we in 40s, acting but... already, or...? No, 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 but, uh... Okay. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I... That's really the extent of the situation. There is evil doll unearthed by child, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, so he, he won't speak, and he seems to be opening up to a degree with having Brahms around. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily like the way the doll looks, um, Katie Holmes and her husband, but they hear that he's kind of talking to Brahms, even if it, that he's not talking to them. So they think it's progress. Unfortunately, things progress even further, and <clears throat> it's not the best scenario for everyone involved. Uh, however, it's not... <laughs> Not nearly as dire as you might want it to be as an audience member either. So um, that's the long and short of the story without spoiling it. But yeah, as like... far as my opinion on it goes, it was just, it was boring. It was everything that we've seen before in any movie similar to this. All the way from Magic to Child's Play to Annabelle. Uh -huh. I mean, there's, there's nothing here that's new in any way, shape, or form. And nothing really that's unnerving in any way, shape, or form. The thing that they try to do differently towards the end just comes off as completely silly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, story-wise, it was just a, a complete failure to me because it's it's completely rehashed with literally no new good twists. Truly, yeah. It's it, it's very like low stakes, slow burn, no urgency whatsoever, and that's <laughs> that's what condemns this film, man. It's what makes it disinteresting and where. Even in the third act, they try to do a few things, and that's where, like, my interest was slightly peaked, and I was like, okay, are they going to actually, like, additional... Nah, nah, no such, uh, no such luck. Are they going to actually so. additional no such luck? That's not a <laughs> sentence, man. What do you mean? Okay, they are... <clears throat> they are additionally not going to do anything interesting in that regard. Gotcha, so, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, but, okay, so jump into the acting, then, since you wanted to talk about Katie Holmes. Yeah, well, I... I adore her, man, and I have loved her since uh, Dawson's Creek and so on and so forth, and disturbing behavior. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah she's good, but, uh, you know, I thought she was an odd choice for this, and it felt like a second-rate choice and one that they, you know, okay, we're going to make a boy sequel. Who else can we, as far as, like, pretty actresses go for that are a little less, like, off the beaten path, and, yeah... That's what, uh, that's what my uh, beloved Katie, unfortunately, is, uh, you know, caught within the midst of. Um, you know, decent enough, I suppose, but, uh, yeah, everybody else is of no noteworthy name, and so, you know, they're they're not bad, unfortunately. The groundskeeper we've seen before in some in some films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he did, uh, you know, register a little bit in my uh, regard, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and it's all named with Katie, and uh, she's, she's not bad, you know, she has decent interplay with her child, husband, so on and so forth, but I... Eh. I don't know. It's it's a poor script that really kills this film and doesn't really give her much to do, really. And uh, she does sell the scenes of just, like, sadness about her child that she is given, but aside from that, really not much else. So, yeah, sure. she's okay. I mean, she's nothing to write home about, and I don't think she ever has been. I, I didn't uh -huh. watch Dawson's Creek, so, I mean, she was okay in Disturbing Behavior. She was not too long ago in that Guillermo del Toro produced horror movie where all the little things were in the wall and she was concerned about another child of hers. Mm. She just doesn't really sell horror for me. I mean, she did okay, but it wasn't... Again, it was... I felt like I'd even seen her performance before, even though this is the first time she's playing this role. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, she doesn't stick out. Well, she doesn't. Out out. Well, she doesn't, yeah. but she doesn't. She doesn't stick out as super interesting in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just standard mom concerned about kid. Again, we've seen everything in this movie before, including the kind of absent but kind of not really father who. Like, comes and goes as the story needs, you know? It's it's kind of strange, but... Yeah. yeah <clears throat> the acting is... It's nothing bad, per se, but nothing to write home about. Unfortunately, I think the kid was left being a little stilted through the back half of the movie because he's trying to act a certain way, you know, that's kind of creepy, but ultimately it just comes down to him, you know, staring like that. And that's yeah. not really acting that's just staring yeah and in that regard <clears throat> i kind of had a prodigy vibe actually with uh, the kid who yeah. played georgie yeah you know, so uh. so yeah acting wise nothing really to write home about um effects wise <laughs> there were some effects 
They were mostly <laughs> CG. There were some <clears throat> effects. <laughs> yeah, there was actually way more effects than I anticipated, especially in the last ten minutes of the movie. But yeah, the third act is uh, kind of bonkers. In they first. try and go crazy with it, but it just ends up being a complete failure. This is what we're going to end up talking about in the spoiler section, yeah. so we'll we'll get to it. But the thing the the, the thing that they use the CG for just is looks so bad, yeah. just looks so bad. So effects wise, not good. I mean, really, just not anything to write home about. Some of them, some of the way the doll has makeup on it to make it look kind of strange at times is okay, but. Yeah. But I mean, if that's what if that's what I'm reaching for <laughs> to you know the fact that they could paint veins convincingly on the yeah. doll, that's that's not a lot. You know what I mean? So yeah, and also the kid's mask and you know what he was trying to you know purport there and stuff. And I, I mean, bleh, I don't know. It was uh, it, it was disinteresting, man. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, sound design, not... sound design and music. Uh, the music I could have taken or left. There was nothing that stuck out to me, and the sound design was just. Uh, no, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a little mm -hmm. of, you know, footsteps above people's heads and, yeah. and and some whispers. It's yeah. I mean, it was accordingly proportioned as far as like where everything was supposed to be, you know, turned and so on and so forth. I mean, yeah. I don't know. This was a film that like was released theatrically, grand scale, obviously, and uh, just did not deliver in any way, shape, or form the way it was hoping that it would. So. Yeah, so um, I think that's as much as we can say in our non-spoiler section, guys. Overall, don't waste your money on this one. Don't even waste your matinee money on this one. Wait until it's streaming somewhere that you can watch it for free. Don't even pay for the streaming service for a month to watch it. It's not even worth that. It's just... If you have an extra A-list. <laughs> yeah, if you have an extra A-list for Maybe. AMC or <laughs> some deal where you pay a monthly... And you can see whatever movie you want, um, however many you want in a month, and you can use it for that. But don't get mad at us for saying, man, I shouldn't have gone to see that. You guys should have told me not to do that and mm -hmm. waste my hour and 26 minutes, hour and 20 minutes if you skip the credits. So yeah. that's not terrible. But it's still, I, I still checked halfway through. I still checked halfway through how far we were. Like, that's how little fun I was having in this one. It's just, it's not egregiously bad. It's just so... Here's the problem. We've seen egregiously bad. Constantly. No, here's the problem. If if a movie, if you either really like a movie or really hate a movie, that's something. Hmm. You have an extreme feeling one way or another. But if you're just like, eh, yeah, it's the whole. That's meh. the worst. I it's think the that's the worst thing. Aspect. Yeah. If you're like indifferent to it and you just don't care, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. That, I think that's worse than than really good or really bad. And sadly, that's the case with this one. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, guys, yeah. so fair warning, we're going to jump into a couple of spoilers right now. It's not going to be that long, but we're going to talk about the thing at the end that pissed us off. So fair warning, spoiler warning in three, two, one. Now, Fuego, I'm not hit the lore real quick, because I know you said you like the lore, so tell them how the lore kind of developed. Real quickly, in the first one, the doll had been essentially being moved around by the guy living in the walls. Mm -hmm. He was using it as that. his living avatar, so to speak. So the food that had to be placed in front of Brahms, all of his rules were because of the guy living in the walls. Yeah. Um, this does not, this we assume that the guy living in the walls has died because now Brahms is supernatural. So go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And they mentioned that the parents have like committed suicide walking into the, you know, like water and all this different craziness. So like Katie Holmes character traces back like online, obviously. And there's so many of these like little bits in horror movies where it's like, okay, all the explanation is being done when with the well, online, we have the internet online now, research. Of course. Well, it, yeah, people yeah, don't yeah, go truly, to libraries anymore. Truly, truly, I know. So yeah, know. she tracks like down the doll using the serial number that she finds mm -hmm. on the foot that you see in the trailer. And she sees all the associative deaths all of the different like corrupted like messed up kids who had some strange like association with this doll the doll and... didn't originate in the first movie in other words mm -hmm. it goes exactly. back like a hundred years or more where there have been incidents involving this doll where children have killed some or all of their in of their immediate family because the doll made me do it and this is where the mythology was fascinating, but yet there was definitely donuts for payoff. I can't do my typical, I, I mean, nothing, not a zip, This is still zilch, a zero, man. man. Everyone knows yeah. this is yeah, zero, Yeah, exactly. Too. Zero. There is nothing that, like, nobody dies in this movie. Not nope. a single person. One there, dog. There, 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 there was a dog. And a that's, dog. like, 
Honestly, as a dog of course lover, a as, dog. A, as a canine lover, like, what the fuck, man? That's just what movies you do, know? man. And, I, and, I feel the same way every time it's a cat. Yeah, yeah, same. It's just very regrettably unfulfilling and unsettling in the same regard as well, you know? And so, yeah, we find out, okay, the, the, the corruption of our main child is transpiring, and... Even where the doll's he... whispering to him, and slowly, like, just basically getting him to do his bidding because mm-hmm. he says, "I'll kill your parents if not." Yeah. And... So the kid's kind of an unwilling yet sometimes willing participant. It's weird. It and... doesn't even define itself. Well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's like kind of willing at the end, but the kind of willing to destroy the doll. And so, like, there's this big reveal where, like, the, the like face is smashed by the father. You know, with the uh, croquet hammer. You know, very shining reference, obviously. And yeah, so, and, well, so well it, real quick, what what happens is the setup is the the kid escapes with the doll in the night. Mm-hmm. Katie Holmes realizes the kid's gone. The dad realizes the kid's gone. They go to the big house from the first movie, mm-hmm. and eventually she enters the walls and and eventually finds her son in the boiler room in the basement with the boiler open behind him, holding the doll. And immediately when I saw that, I'm going to be like, oh, he's already switched. Brahms is in the boy, and the boy is in Brahms now. Um, But that's not quite how it plays out. She has a shotgun, she sets it down, and then um, she almost saves the boy... And the, the you know the the doll is set down and she, but uh, but instead the boy picks up the shotgun he has his porcelain boy mask on which you see in the trailers and so he's I about mean. yeah he's about to shoot her and says you know I, I, I have to you guys broke the rules and all this stuff yeah. and then the dad comes down yeah. and uses the croquet mallet and smashes the boy's head and when he does and seems like you th- kick the kid out of it for a moment at least well yeah. no well no hang on he he smashes Sorry. it and when he does the head doesn't just pulverize you see there's something under the porcelain part oh, and then yeah, the doll yeah, yeah. falls and then yeah the kid is shocked out of it for a minute and you're like oh okay and he's just like mom what's going on you know yeah. and then we look and and the groundskeeper shows up mm-hmm. and it turns out that he's been under the doll's sort of spell the whole time like he knew the doll was gonna pick this family and all this stuff that was the one who pieced him back together blah, right blah, right exactly yeah. he was the one that we saw at the end of the first movie piecing him back together not the killer that we assumed survived mm-hmm. so so anyway brahms sits up by himself and we see that underneath the rest of the porcelain falls away and we basically see and this is what i thought was so stupid this it's this it's definitely it was a practical effect that they just completely overlaid in cg Hmm. um and it basically looked like the burned chucky head from child's play one mixed with arse face from preacher he literally had that burned look with one milky eye and then he had the the ass mouth that that had weird red lines running into it it looked so ridiculous and so stupid and it just starts looking around at things and like it sends off this shockwave that kills the groundskeeper, sends the parents flying back, doesn't do anything to kid to the kid, and, and that's all that it does. I, I mean, and then it's power. But it looks around too. Don't forget, off. it looks around. Well, well, yeah, but then its power backs off, man. And then you think like the parents the kid, stand up and yeah. they see the kid. Go ahead, pick it up from there. The kid is holding the doll again. Kid is holding the doll, and then he acts like he's gonna like continue nurturing it, and then he throws the doll right in the fire and you're like okay where did the power subside like what is going on yeah we they play it like oh the kid overpowered the doll's you know words and just threw him into the fire instead meanwhile and yet being a horror movie you're like no (laughs) oh no he already switched he already switched that's the kid burning in there right now yeah (laughs) and and so we just watched lock and key yeah exactly (laughs) it's it's that same switch um, but, but, uh, but anyway, the, um, the, the, the parent, you know, we go forward in time, they're living in that, in their old house. Yeah, they're back in London. The kid's back not, to normal again or whatever. And then. Talking, everything's great. Everything's good. Woo! And then she puts him to bed and leaves the bedroom and his eyes open back up. He goes over, he pulls the drawer out and he puts the porcelain mask back on. And I was hoping against someone, I'm like, please don't let him still have that stupid porcelain mask. Of course, he puts the porcelain mask back yeah. on, and he's like, I think we're going to like it here, Brahms. So I guess it wasn't even a full switch. No. Like, he's just now got Brahms in his head instead of needing the doll as well. Yeah. 
So it, even yeah, that so wasn't was as like interesting a, as it could have been. Yeah, the doll was a shell, presumably, I guess. I mean, and, Well, by the end, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so it has jumped to him and that presence, that power, whatever, that... You know, Katie Holmes researched so like rigorously that went, like went back to the like what 1800s, 1700s. And here's something, something that's kind of smart that I just realized as I was about to make a point. I'd be like, well, if they continue the series, they can't. They, they would have to do prequels because you can't do a, a series called The Boy without the doll. And I'm like, oh shit, no. Now it's just about the boy instead. Mm -hmm. So they literally could continue it and continue to call him the boy, but now it's about the boy that's crazy instead. Ah, Way okay. less interesting. So I think what they did in setting up all those past families is now they can Annabelle it and the nun it and go back and tell those older stories about the doll. Interesting. Guaranteed, that's what yeah. the boy three is going to be. That's it's going to be an older one. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Crazy, I mean, man. any other spoilers besides that? Everyone survives yeah. except the dog. Yeah. And the boy, yeah. I guess. No, no well, no, the boy's alive, no, too. No, no other bloodshed. Even the bit in the trailer where the kid falls Oh, the falls groundskeeper on, died, where, well, 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 no, We the assume. Kid, well, yeah, maybe. But the He's kid falling down. on the croquet spike that we see in the trailer, and we're just like, oh, it's just so... just goes through, like, it's here. So, it's so nefarious. It's like a shoulder bit. And so, yeah, it's PG-13. He's not dead. PG-13, yeah. big time. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah, they, yeah the trailer makes it look like his head's gonna go through that spike. Yeah, I was hoping head, heart, like something, neck, something. nasty, yeah. you know. But no, it's nope. PG thirteen for nope. sure. PG thirteen. So, <laughs> so there you go, it? guys. That's gonna do it. That's all the spoilers. That's gonna do it for the review. Uh, hopefully, we just saved you guys some money and you don't waste your time with this. But hey, if you feel the need to go see it anyway. By all means, but it's, I'm telling you, it's not even the fun kind of bad. So no. you might as well save yourself the time and money for now. Not so much. <laughs> so, yeah. If you guys watch enjoyed Sonic, the video, yeah, go watch Sonic. We both enjoyed that one. <laughs> um, but we still have Invisible Man to look forward to. And I yes. think one other one this month. Uh, no, this month, no. I think that's the only one. And then okay. next month, we have uh, Quiet Place 2. Oh, right, right, early, right. Early right, March. Right, early yeah, March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we still have two back to back between those two. So. All right, but that's going to do it. If you guys enjoyed this video, click the like button. And if you want to make sure you don't miss those upcoming reviews, click that notification bell and subscribe. Um, go ahead. Stand <laughs> oh, yes, uh, make sure to be a patron. Uh, if you want to give us like, you know, you know, commentary requests, any sort of uh, review recommendations, so on and so forth, tell us what to do. Be that proverbial puppet master. We appreciate it. Indeed. So thank you guys yeah. very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. And gracias. I've been Jaime Fuego. And remember... Stay, Stay scared. scared. Oh.